Yo, what up, what up, what up? Welcome back to Pinoy News, man. Listen, so our infrastructure is kind of falling apart in America. Um, there's been another rail, you know what I mean, derailment in Minnesota today, you know what I mean? And I'll be honest, about a thousand of these happened a year. We already made a video on this. You want to check that out? I'll put the link in, you know what I mean, somewhere. I don't fucking really care. Right, but I wanted to give you a higher resolution view of exactly what's going on so that you completely understand everything, right? So let's get let's get down to some of this business. All right, so this is the average age of different types of infrastructure in infrastructure in America and the expected life expectancy, right, of it. You know what I mean? Like how long it's supposed to last. Our locks are way old, our dams are old, our levees are at the at the capacity. If you live in the East Coast, your water pipes are probably way past the age where they should have been replaced. Same with sewage, same with bridges, right? When you talk about roads and rail, like they say rail is only 28 years old, but rail is only expected to live 30 years, right, just to begin with. And, again, this varies because you have to remember, so... In the 1950s and 60s, when we were building out a lot of infrastructure on places like the West Coast and Texas, like a lot of new things got laid in because of like the expansion of how big these places got very, very quickly. You know, I mean, on the East Coast, it's probably a lot older than that, right? This is a rail line map of the United States. It, there, there's a lot, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a lot, right? Rail by freight, the different types of freight that they actually take, right? So 52% of all rail freight consists of bulk commodities such as agriculture and energy products. 48% of all rail consists of, of all rail freight consists of consumer goods and other miscellaneous products, right? All right, so here's a cool little stat. Uh, one gallon of gas can take a ton of freight, you know what I mean, um, like 478, 480 miles. I read 472, but 480 is fine. Right, so that's pretty far for a ton of freight for one gallon of gas. I'm gonna go over the different types of cars that are in each individual, um, or like each rail line moves. Right, so this is a tanker car, box car. If y'all are kind of, you know, I'm just something to show y'all again, high resolution so you understand everything. Car hauler, right, kind of looks like this. You always thought these are the ones that are like, you know like cows and stuff, right? And you'd be right, some of these do move cows, but this is also what's known as a car hauler. Um, this here is a coal hauler, right? Oh man, listen. Oh, wrong one, all right. This is a flat car, a hanging car. You see a lot of these, um, they usually move things like drywall and things of this nature, right? Highly important to understand, right? Okay, legit. And get, get out of here, you. Right, sorry. <laughs> Grain car, you know what I mean? And these are the different type of cars that the rails operate going across the United States, right, as a whole. So, let's take you through the process of what happens. Say, you know what I mean, you want a hammer, okay? Well, that hammer is made in this place called China, right? And then it gets put on a boat, this boat right here, right? This, this is the only boat that ever exists. According to me, this is the only boat, right? You know what I mean, when it comes down to it, all right? Then that boat goes to a port, all right? This port here, you know what I'm saying, it, like on the west coast of the United States. You live in New Jersey, and you want a hammer, right? You know what I mean? But they don't bring hammers to the port of New Jersey. Hammers only go to the port of Los Angeles, right? About 80% of all freight comes in through the west coast of the U.S., right, at the end of the day. Well, actually, I think it's something like 40%, because like another 50% comes out of Mexico. I don't know. Anyway, right, we're going to keep going. So then it's taken off of this boat, right, at the port, right, and it's put on to a container or a chassis, right? And this chassis is picked up by a jockey wagon, right? And this jockey wagon, you know what I mean, stands here and takes it and drops it off into a hole, right? And then a drayage driver picks it up and takes it to either a warehouse or a port sorting facility, right? Now, this port sorting facility, right, is where it'll go on to things called the intermodal, intermodal trail, right? Oh, hang on. Here, we'll do this one. Right. It goes on to this, these type of things here. Right. Hang on. There we go. Intermodal, intermodal container. Right. These intermodal containers are then put onto Norfolk Southern intermodal rail cars. Right. And these rail cars are transported across the country. 
right? And, you know what I mean, it looks kind of like this, you know what I mean, as far as stuff's concerned, right? Then it's taken to, you know what I'm saying, intermodal rail yard, right? An intermodal rail yard, another intermodal carrier picks it up, right, at the intermodal rail yard and takes it. And, you know, it's taken back off by our cherry picker, put onto a chassis, and then another person, pick, another driver picks it up and takes it to a warehouse, right? Now, this warehouse here will sort it out depending on what store in the area that it needs to go to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like warehouses exist all over the country, but like the largest places in my area, right? So this is why, like, I'm really familiar with this, right? It goes into here, and then it might go to New Jersey or Baltimore or New York or, you know, PA or wherever it's going to go, right? You know I mean? Because that's where people live, right? And then JB Hizzle will pick it up from, you know what I mean, the uh, from the warehouse, right? And then it'll deliver it to your Home Depot store where you can grab a hammer off of the shelves, right? Highly important. Okay, so that's how commercial freight, you know what I mean, con consumer freight gets driven from, you know what I mean, like, you know, China to America, right? That's the whole process. Here goes your corn, right? All of your things that you eat, your Pop-Tarts and your Goy Slop that you guys motherfucking love, right? gets taken out of the field by a combine, put into a bucket, right? And then put into either a silo or, you know what I'm saying, a giant corn pile, right? Either way it goes, right? And then a grain truck takes it and picks it up, right? And it takes it to a grain facility, right? Where it gets dumped into like a big ass hole, right? Then the grain facility drops it onto a fucking train, right? And this train, you know what I'm saying, remember them grain cars that I showed you a while back, right? Takes it over to a grain factory where it's dropped off, right? And this is the same thing with coal, all these type of things, right? The bigger fucking items that you have. Now, right, why are we having a problem? Because all of this are relying upon these. These wheels, axles, brakes, things of this nature, right? And these. Rails, nails, hammers, rail ties, stones. You have to understand that, like, Everything that we have, right? Same with, you know, me shipping when it comes to, you know, me trucks and things of this nature, trucking, whatever, whatever it is in logistics. It's all relying upon some very basic physics, right? Some very basic things, you know, like trucks grip on the road, the wheels grips on the road, you know, ice, snow, sleet, hail, all these things get fucked up rather quickly. Same with the rail, you know, ice, snow, weather, Age, rust, wear, time, freight, heat will break everything down. And when it ends up getting broken down, you end up with train derailments and you end up with mushroom clouds in East Palestine. It is what it is. Things are old. You people don't want to pay for stuff. Things cost money. These rail companies are competing with trucking companies that only have to pay for trucks and trailers and drivers. This rail company has to pay for the rail, the box car, the train car, the drain car, the car hauler, right? Their, their fucking rail facilities, the jockey wagons, all the, all the stuff, the logistics that make all these things work. And they have to be competitive in their price. Why? Because you people refuse to pay what it actually costs for your food every piece of food that sits on your plate on average move 3,000 miles to get there and you don't want to discuss that you don't want to have a conversation about that because you've got accustomed to your vidya games and your goy slop and you know i mean your, your cheap fucking trinkets all of these things cherry pops or whatever the fuck they are bobbleheads, all, all the things that you, you, you fucking weirdos like. Your fur costumes, whatever. All of you have gotten accustomed to this. And this long term is not going to work. It is what it is. Yo, look, I'm Tom Pease of P. Noy News. If you enjoyed this content, do me a favor. Drop a like. Drop a subscription. Hit that bell for me. Right? I'll be back, you know what I'm saying, like tomorrow with another video for y'all. You'll know how this works. I'm out. Peace, man.